G'day guys and girls, it's Billy here from Western Australia. Um, well guys, as a lot of my subscribers might know who have been following me for a long time, I'm a survivor of um, mental illness, depression, anxiety, suicide, alcoholism, drugs, you know that guys, I've been there. But you know, the last couple of months I've been right into my exercise. I go for two seven kilometer walks every day and it's just amazing the stuff that I think about when I go on these walks because you know your mind's ticking over and all these things come into your mind like childhood memories and memories of all the pain and um, heartache you've been through and um, yeah so just today like I was going for a walk and I was just thinking about um, certain things what had happened to me you know I'm so proud guys of um, surviving this depression and mental illness anxiety because like I say guys I am a survivor I'm exactly like you you know I've been there I know how I know what the pain is like the anguish you know the days where you just want to end it all and um, so much more you know so I'm just doing this off the top of my head guys it's nothing worse you know I've thought about when I'm walking you know some of the inspirational stuff I could tell you and unfortunately it probably just leaves my mind so sitting underneath my beautiful peace tree and I thought you know I'd um, come into a, a video and hopefully try and help some of you people out there who, who do suffer from mental illness and depression. So like I say guys, I've honestly, I'm 45 years of age and I've suffered from, probably honestly, I'm going to be honest, from depression I'd, and I never knew what depression was but probably since I was about 13 is when I really started struggling with depression. It could have been earlier times because, you know, as a young kid, my mum suffered horribly from cancer when I was about 10 years of age. And I, I didn't understand that, but that's another story. And that was, you know, that could have been... Sophie, sit. Don't ruin my video. Come here, give me a kiss. 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 No, oh, I love you. I love you. Oh. This is what keeps me. This is what keeps me going, guys. My beautiful three dogs. And Sophie's a new addition to my family. So, but anyway, but if it wasn't for my pets too, guys. So, oh, you people out there have got pets. You know how therapeutic, you know, pets are if you suffer from any form of illness, whether it be physical or mental. And my dogs, far out. Guys, I've got no kids and these are my kids. They sleep in the bed with me and everything. You know, I treat them, you know, I treat them like my own kids and they, they know it too, guys, and they give me so much love. I'd be stuffed without them. You know, I have problems with the local shire and they, you know, always, you know, I tried to take my dogs off me. I tell you what, if that happened, it'd be the end of the word for the Shire. But anyway, guys, what am I talking about? Suffering from mental illness and depression. Yeah, like I was 13 um, when I first started, you know, suffering. The reason being when I was 13, guys, I got really badly bullied by a couple of school teachers and I come from a small country town, so I was the only boy in my class. I was for three years, from when I was 13 to 15, it was just me and eight girls. And there was two teachers who really hated me for some reason. I know why, but I won't say. They, were, they, they took out all their hate out on me and humiliated me in front of the girls. And, you know, that's a con you know, it's, I know that awful experience is why being 45 a, a male now and probably still single with no kids because of that awful horrible episode what happened to me as a 13 year old and yeah 
So that's just one example. You know, there's many other traumatic things that have happened to me in the past that have contributed to my depression and mental illness. And um, like I say, guys, I've tried to kill myself before. Uh, Self-harming, I did that. Um, another, what else? I did. I started self-harming when I was about 13. I remember I, I pretended to try and kill myself when I was about 13. Oh no, 15 at a boarding school. I went to a boarding school, and I was getting bullied again by these two kids. And uh, really sadistic bullying guys. You know, they organised fights for me. Like if I didn't fight these other kids, I'd get. You know, they'd threaten to hurt, like kill me, bash me up. And so they'd organise these fights. It only happened a few times, so I won all of the fights. But you know, I was fighting against really good friends too. Like you know, you know, when you're like, um, I don't know. I mean, I was quite popular at my boarding school. I was really good at sports. I played sports and everything else like that. You know, the football, cricket, and tennis. But you know, so I went to a boarding school, a boarding school for country kids. And I had really good, all my boarding school mates were, you know, best friends. And I, you know, I was very, really popular at the boarding school. But at the high school we went to, the townie kids from the other big town, Narragin, we used to call them the townies. We were, we were the boarders and they were the townies. And there was a couple of townie kids, an Aboriginal boy and another kid who's actually dead now. And that's Karma. So Karma caught up with him. And the, the Aboriginal boy and the white kid used to be really sadistic to me. You know, hit me all the time. I hit them too, you know, but I'd lose it. So, um, yeah, but they were just really sadistic to me. So they'd organise fights with me and my a couple of my mates. And, yeah, so that's just... Not, and that at that boarding school is when I started to self-harm and really think about suicide um, so this is all coming to my mind right now guys the first time I tried to pretend to commit suicide was an attention seeking thing I grabbed a couple of packets of Panadol and I um, they were Panadol capsules and I pretended to um, empty the cat well I did empty all the capsules of all the ingredients in the Panadol Oh, the gelatine capsules and then I you know swallowed them all in for my mates trying to you know trying to get attention and that didn't work and it's just horrific the bullying I had to put up be, had to put up with and then that's when I started to um, I started cutting myself at first but then I found another thing and this is what started off trickle trichotillomania so I, I I have got trichotillomania guys and that's called trichotillomania means hair pulling so what the only hairs I pull is not the actual hair on my head but the hairs on my fingers it's really unusual guys and um, so all the hairs on my fingers not the second knuckle down here not those ones but the hairs in between your fingernail and your first knuckle so if you have a look at your fingers in between your first your fingernail and your knuckle you'll see hairs in the middle of your finger just there I don't want to do close-up guys so I bite my nail so I got these special little Swiss Army knife tweezers and I've been doing this since I was 15 and I pull out all the hairs out of my fingers so all the my fingers between my fingernail and the first knuckle I've got no hairs I still get hairs occasionally but I'll pull them out more or less straight away or what I'll do is either pull them out with my teeth or I'll get my Swiss Army uh, tweezers and actually dig into the skin and pull out the hair follicles so with this trichotillomania guys I mean the pain it's painful but it's a kind of a good pain, you know, it feels good, so it's a form of self-harm, so I love it, I mean, I admit I still do it, I can't stop, and I never will stop, so that's the worst, that's one of the things that I still do now, is this trichotillomania, 
So I pull out all the hairs out of my fingers and my thumbs and certain places on my certain places sorry I'm chewing on a bit of chewing gum certain places on my face like this scar here that one right there there that's one there what I used to pull out hair all the time I do I still do now if I see it growing out out of the scar and also around my moustache area between my eyebrows um, certain parts of my eyebrows any place what looks like that the hair shouldn't be there or looks you know the hair might look thin or th or unusually thick or white or grey or it just looks like that the hair shouldn't belong I'll pull it out with these tweezers it's a mental illness guys it's, um, it's I'll put the links below. There's heaps of people who suffer from it. It's mainly women who suffer from it. They'll pull out all the hairs out of their out of their head, and they'll be you'll see women with patches of hair missing, or they'll be totally bald just from pulling out all their hair. So that's what I've had since I was about 15. Trichotillomania. So that's something I still suffer from right now. And like sometimes I'll spend like a week trying to get one single hair out of my finger it's so hard to pull out or it's so so tiny or so fragile that my tweezers just can't get it and that's when I start digging into my skin to get um, the hair follicles and I actually cut into the skin and pull it out and yeah I can do it for hours on end um, I'll get I'll do it in front of um, a special like a lamp so I'll put the hair up to the to the light or the lamp so I can just see the tiny hair. If you so I'm an expert at doing it guys, it's hard to explain and it's uh, really it can be really annoying. And yeah, like I say I've got scars all over my fingers from doing it. Another thing too guys is when I started getting bullied at or I'm still forty five years of age as well guys and I still bite my nails and I hate it. That's why when you'll, you'll see a lot of my videos, I don't actually point, you won't see my fingernails, I'll point with my fingers upside down. My nails aren't that bad, but I just feel really embarrassed that I'm 45 and I still bite my fingernails. Another thing too, guys, when I went to boarding school and I was getting bullied, was um, I'd try and pretend, I'd pretend to be sick, just so I wouldn't have to go to school. And some, and I've had actually had two medical procedures done. What I, you could more or less could say that I faked. I pretended that something was wrong with me, just so I could miss out on going to school for a few days. And they weren't like general anaesthetic medical procedures; it was local anaesthetic. So, for the two things I've had done was one on my neck, on the side of my neck. I suffered from acne as a kid. And I had a, a cyst on the side of my neck, and um, I ended up getting a doctor to actually cut it out. And another thing was, and the scars still there, and I got called awful names at the boarding school like Scar Neck, Frankenstein, and all that. The scar was probably about that long; it was pretty visible. I had short hair, so you could easily see it. And it was a big red scar. It's not; it's I can still feel it now. It's not really visible now. And another thing too, my inner groin, like just here, there's two uh, lymph nodes on the side of your, um, in between your, uh, your penis and your testicles. It's called two lymph nodes. Everyone's got it, even women. And it's right in the groin here, right there. And I end up getting one of those cut out because I told the doctor that it was really painful and swollen. And the worst thing is, guys, the doctor also, it was the same doctor who did both procedures, and the doctor should never have done these procedures. The only reason he did it was, per, was for money reasons. So I took advantage of the doctor, and he took advantage of me. So that's what I did when I was suffering from bullying as a kid. Um, I, um, yeah, more or less hated school I used to pretend to be sick all the time at the boarding school um, it was just horrible guys I've 
putting up this, you know, I had to give the kid these two bullies money and they'd cut, they'd punch me and stab me and cut me and heaps of nasty stuff. I've always thought about getting revenge. Like I said previously, I heard that one of these kids was, was actually died and I don't know if, it, I think it is actually true. He died a long time ago, probably well over 20 years ago probably five years uh, when he was probably 20 years of age or something. But I tell you what, guys, I mean, I'm not joking. And even now, oh, well, I haven't thought about it for a long time, but even, you know, in the last few years, when I really did, you know, I suffered from really serious depression and anxiety and self-hate and self-loathing, and I thought so much of getting revenge on... Firstly, the two teachers who really badly bullied me, and secondly, the two kids at that private boarding school I went to. You know, I felt like, you know, actually going there and hunting them down and killing them. You know, that's how much hate I had inside my heart for these people who hurt me. And I've done videos on this before, guys, and um, the teacher who actually bullied me the first time... Um, really good friends of my mum and dad and my mum and dad treated him like their own son and I've done videos on this before he used to live just across the next house just over the fence just here and you know he was in the army reserve the army reserve my dad's a Vietnam veteran dad's passed away now and so they both had a lot of stuff in common and I'm ex-army as well and I looked up to this bloke who was my teacher he used to give me army reserve stuff like little, um, you know, army gear, like a, a hat or stickers and uh, comics, army comics and stuff like that. But he hated me for so, hated me so much. He took out all his hate out on me, and it just, just you know, I could have been a, a smart kid, guys. I don't know if I could have went to university, but what he did to me basically destroyed me, and um, that's why. I'm 45 now and I, I don't work, guys. I'm ex-army and navy. I do get a, a military pension for, um, you know, certain stuff what happened to me and I witnessed in the military. So, but that's one of the reasons now, guys, why I'm still single at 45. I've got hardly any friends. You know, I find it so hard to relate. Or I find it, you know, I've only got probably three good friends and I never even see them and the friends I've got an awful habit of rejecting a lot of friendships I, I make and that's I blame that on what's happened to me in the past I'm too scared of getting too close to certain people so this is why I do a lot of my videos guys so it just keeps me sane and it's why I find it really hard to reply to people's emails um, YouTube messages and so forth, even comments, because I, I'm probably scared that I don't want to get too friendly with people. I've got a lot of trust issues and so much more. So I just find it really hard to make friends, guys. I'm, I'm a bit of a loner, and I enjoy it. I love being by myself. I've got my dogs. I mean, I've got no, you know, real commitments. But, yeah, I, you know, I'm one of those people who can't. Even now, how I say that all my depression and anxiety is gone, I still can't go into a pub or a nightclub, you know, um, places where there's crowds and that kind of stuff because of, it's just too hard for me. I can't deal with loud noises and enclosed spaces and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so that's just part of what's happened to me in the past guys it's only a tiny fracture I didn't plan on talking about that I'm going to do another video now on giving up um, my antidepressant tablets and medication it's been 11 months fellas since I threw away my medication uh, antidepressants Effexor um, and Exanax so I'm going to do a video on that right now this is what this video is supposed to be about but I drifted away and yeah but, you know, it takes a lot of courage, people, guys and girls, to, you know, for someone like me to share all my life traumas and traumatic things what have happened to me. But, you know, 
it's helped me so much, guys, just to release all this um, traumatic memories and stuff. And this is the main reason why I started YouTubing, is to let go of the past and just, you know, share my story with everyone out there. I know I don't get too many views, but sometimes I'll get a couple of thousand. But I'll tell you what. I highly recommend it if you guys out there suffer from depression and mental illness try and find the courage to speak up share your life stories and um, you know and it's just a, an amazing way of finding peace in life to uh, heal yourself and to get better I know it's hard guys I know how hard it is like I say, I've, you know, I've been there, I've survived, I'm still alive at 45, thank God. So anyway guys, that's just some of the um, things I just didn't plan on sharing with you. I didn't plan on sharing about my trichotillomania, um, self-harm, you know, everything else. So that's just another thing I can tick off my bucket list, what I've told you guys. Like I say, it takes a lot of guts and money. A small town country boy in a town of 250 people every single person knows me and I'm sure a lot of those people might watch my videos so oh well that's one thing another couple of secrets I've shared on YouTube thanks guys appreciate it and stay tuned I'm gonna talk right now about giving up antidepressants for 11 months see ya bye